My name is Netsky. I'm here in my studio in Antwerp. It's uh, a little control room in, uh, in my living room, actually, which I'm very lucky with. And today I'm going to show you how I make my track real. Wherever she goes, I go, we roll, we go, flying over cities down to Rio, it's Rio, love that I feel, oh, nothing lasts forever, but I'm down for the minute, so just chill. So the track is a collaboration with Digital Farm Animals, who, uh, who wrote and sung the vocals. Um, we, I think we started with the vocal on, on uh, 126 BPM, so it's like more of a house record uh, with just simple kind of major piano chords in the background. And uh, we kind of switched it all around. We, uh, we went from a house record into kind of a summary uh, drum and bass record. So it was, a, it was, it was a, a really cool learning curve for me. It was a really fun track to make. And um, yeah, it, it came together quite easily. I like to start with, uh, well, to explain, to explain the song a bit, I, I like to start with the drums a little bit. So the song for me is kind of divided in, in three, um, yeah, in three sections arrangement wise. Um, there's, there's an intro, which sounds like this. It's a very, very simple kind of harmonic intro um, with, a, with a simple kind of sandbaish uh, clap loop on top of it. And then it goes into um, yeah another intro basically, but it's it's a hip hop beat with a vocal you hear. So basically, I, I start with those two parts, that um, both um, two times 16 bars, or like whatever tempo you want to look at it, it's two chunks of 16 bars. Um, yeah, with the intro, it was, it was fairly easy. I got um, this drum loop. The thing is, I never named my tracks in Ableton, so it's so hard to find everything back, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, this was one of the chopped up loops I used for the drums, so it's, um, it, it was all a loop. Uh, it, there wasn't much programming for the, for the intro part. That's part of it, so it's kind of a, how do you call it? Like um, kind of a cinematic kind of drum or something like that. Uh, I chopped it up, the original sample was that. Very simple chop, chop up job, just um, relooping that first kind of bit here and yeah. Um, fairly simple, um, what other elements are there? So, so there's some harmonics. Very simple silent um, kind of patch. Um, I don't really like to use like um, presets that much in silent because I, I use it mostly for pads and like more filter than some plugs, some some leads. Uh, but with this, it was it's fairly simple. Just eight saw waves, a little bit detuned, um, and that's it really. Like a little bit of uh, distortion. Uh, I pan it a tiny little bit. There's an auto pan which is like a native. Ableton thing to like kind of give it a little bit of a uh, stereo excitement, um, and I just used the uh, uh, the built-in equalizer plugin to um, to use a, a low pass. Very simple. It's just automated on the track. It, it goes up and down a little bit. A uh, little bit of reverb, but yeah, super simple. Um, there's one kind of extra sound that I use. I think it's a, a preset in Serum called Bottle Blower, which sounds like this. Very simple kind of one note thing. Don't know what I put it in there, but kind of made, made the master. So that wasn't really the part I started with when I produced the track. That was just like I used the melody of the chorus of like the, the, the drop and, and kind of wanted to like do a, a build up with that because the, the intro sounded a bit too harsh to start with in my eyes. So basically out of the intro the vocal starts uh, not on the one but on the three before the drop. Wherever she goes, I go, we go, we go, flying over cities down to Rio, it's Rio, love that I feel, oh, nothing else forever but So with this part I'll just, I'll talk about the vocal, I didn't do that much processing to be honest, like the original vocal was 124 BPM, so it would have sounded like 
this. Wherever she goes, I go, we roll, we go, it's, flying over With some vocals, it's really hard to like, kind of transpose them or like, put them in a d different tempo without losing the quality. And with this, it was fine. It's, um, it's the, the magical voice of, uh, of Digital Farm and it, was, it always works. I've got his lucky charm in studio as well. That's, uh, <laughs> that's his pick he gave me once, I don't know why. But it's my lucky charm now in studio. Whenever the pick is looking at me, I, I know something's going right. So, um, basically, 173 BPM, we sped it up. Wherever she goes, I go, we roll, we go, flying over cities down to Rio, it's Rio. Quality doesn't sound feel. great Nothing when you solo it, obviously it's not soloed in the track, so, so it works. Chill. And that's distortion on it in some points and stuff, so we, we kind of, we, we play with it, um, which, which makes it much easier to kind of transpose or like change tempos on vocals. Um, so yeah, there's that. She goes, I go, the chain is very go. simple. I think it was a dry-ish vocal with all, without all this. She goes, I go, no, it wasn't even dry. So go, this this was a recording that we made go, with uh, with effects on it already. But I've added one of my favorite vocal plugins, which is Nectar. Um, very simple kind of chain. There's a de-esser on there. A little, well, a lot of de-essing actually. Um, a little bit of EQing, I don't know what I'm doing that here in Nectar and then again in a native plugin. Don't, don't ask me why, but um, some saturation, a bit of compressing and a limiter. It's, um, I mean, it's, even a, it's even a preset, hip-hop and rap, aggressive rap. So with, with these kind of plugins, I, I tend to use presets sometimes and just change, change all the parameters and kind of for it to work like with, with the current vocal. But again, very simple kind of chain, super push, I, I shouldn't really push um, the volumes like that anyway, but um, so for the bass line I used a, a plugin called Hydra, which I don't really use that, that much, but um, I've heard about it on a forum, um, and I think it's used a lot for like kind of harsh jungle sounding bass lines, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of really cool presets in there, uh, it might even be a sampler, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, without the, the, um, without the chain behind it, it sounds like this. So kind of a bit of a colored kind of sign, sub, sub kind of bass sound sound. So I, uh, I've put Camel Fat on it, which is one of my favorite plugins. It's such a shame they, they've discontinued it. It's, uh, it's literally one of my favorite plugins to use to like get some proper distortion and, and to, uh, I love the LFOs in the plugin and stuff. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so basically, so obviously it sounds a lot dirtier than the original bassline sound, which I really wanted to do. Um, for me, like when when you work with a simple bassline and and a kind of, it's not a poppy vocal, but um, yeah, it could be. It's a bit more poppy than than some than, than vocals I, I use normally. Um, so I like to kind of. Um, fill that up with a more kind of aggressive sound in the background instrumentally and um, I think that really works like a, a more poppy vocal and and a really dirty bass line sound that's that's always a good combination um, so with the bass line um, again with the aggressive bass line sound I try to um, yeah with this I, I just there's some side chaining not too much I think oh actually that's quite a lot okay it's ducking quite a lot actually, uh, I think a good 12 dB or something like that. Um, so I sidechain uh, the bass and sound with, uh, with the kick that's happening underneath it, I'll, I'll show you the kick later, and the snap. Um, just have that real pumping kind of trappy hip hop vibe behind it. Um, I think sidechain is a really good way to like kind of fill that space up, make it sound loud and to have that pumping sound, so that, that was important to me. So that bass line with the kick and the snap, or just the kick, I'll show you. Um, if I find the kicks. So, it's a very dirty kick, it's not very clean, um, which is really what I wanted there. It's, um, it's hip hop, it, should be, it, should, it shouldn't be too clean. So the drums, um, I've used a very simple kind of 909, I think. I think I pitched down the, I uh, pitched up the, the higher, the, the close higher a little bit, like two semitones, like you can see. Here, two semitones. That's a that's a snare. Quite a lot of um, reverb room on there. Um, but also the clap, which I did. Uh, I didn't use it in the end, so it's it's muted. But yeah. So that's the that's the drums. Very simple drums again. Forever, but I'm down for the minute. 
the soldiers chill Wherever she goes, I go We roll, we go Flying over cities down to Rio It's real, love that I feel oh, Nothing lasts forever But I'm down for the minute soldiers chill go. To go from the hip hop bit into the trumpet bit was just one stack of like um, trumpets on one note. Uh, and then it goes into this. So what I'll do, I'll just keep it playing and I'll just go through each single layer and, and just build it up. Um, I've got no idea what I'm going to select, but... So that's a tiny bit of like white noise and silent fear, just to have a, a bit of a rhythm. Don't really know where I used it, but uh, yeah, sometimes it's, it's nice to have that rhythm. Uh, then Superior Drummer, which is a very important drum plugin to me. Um, I, um, I'm most, I mostly just use it for like hi-hats, rides, crashes, um, sometimes some toms. Uh, but it's a very life sounding, human sounding kind of drum plugin. Um, I don't really humanize it here, but like normally I, 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 I like to use the random kind of annotation um, and, and just use it so high it's don't sound too binary to like have a little bit of shuffle, but not too much. Um, but with this is quite straightforward. It's every note sounds kind of the same, I think. Um, another high hat sample, just a simpler in, um, in Ableton. Again, all of that, not very exciting, but all together it, it kind of creates a bit of a life vibe. So here's another superior drummer that I that I've frozen. Unfortunately, I can't let show it to you now, but it's um, just a bit of toms, just no low end whatsoever, um, just to have that little bit of grit in the top, a little bit. Very like high pitched kind of. Um, Bass drum, no, no sub, um, no sub frequencies. Everything under 80, uh, yeah, 85. It's gone. Um, what else is there? I'll mute it out for a second. That's just an effect that comes straight out of the hip hop bit. So that's muted out. Really, really cool loop here. I don't know where I got it from. From some sample pack. Oh, Hit Kit, which is a brilliant sample pack. Hit Kit, look it up, really cool. Again, some claps, lots of claps actually. That's, that's full clap layers to just make it sound really live. I kind of um, changed the, the delay on, on each track as well to like to fit the, the kind of um, to fit that, yeah, there's, there's sometimes with claps, obviously there's a bit of pre-recording before the actual clap sound starts, and I, I like it to be a bit random over that. Some people just like moving in the grid. I, I like to use the, the delay function Ableton, um, so I can use the grid on, um, on, on each second or third and like keep, keep it there. Um, yeah, some more hi-hats. There's lots of loops in, in that build-up. Some Brazilian kind of percussion. <laughs> Feels like that's not ending like all these years. <laughs> right. So this is loops in the sub bass. That's not that much bass because I, fa I find it important to like on the drop have as much bass as possible and to like kind of get an ex explosion in, in the sub as well. Um, so there's a little bit of that. Then all the musical is, um, elements. Very, very compressed kind of OTT piano. I use three, the two pianos a lot um, as a plugin. This. I like it. Good, good plugin. Really good for stuff like this. Um, just an, an OTT plugin, um, an OTT um, preset in, in Ableton. Don't even know what that is. A heartbeat sound in Omnisphere. Then a more live sounding bass line um, in that as well. So these are the trumpets, like, they don't even sound like trumpets sometimes. They, they, they could be saxophone or like a combination of stuff, but it's very... It's like, yeah, 
The velocity obviously um, tries three or four different samples, so that's or two. But I use the highest velocity to have that real kind of, um, yeah, kind of. What's what's the name for it? It's um, it's not aggressive, but it's it's quite in like in the mix. It's quite forward. Um, yeah. So. It's um, two octaves, um, and at the end, I used a, a little bit of harmonies just to like make it sound like a bit more interesting in, in my ears. So this is all quite straightforward. But then, at some point, I add like this harmony, which is literally just ba 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 no. Very simple harmony. Um, it is a combination of uh, all these instruments, so trumpet, sax, and uh, a combination of all together um, in Session Horns Pro, which is a really, really cool um, library in context. Uh, really like it. I think it's part of the uh, the complete series, if, if you call that. I think it is. Um, so that's one of the layers. And in the intro, I only use this layer, but there's one other. Um, excuse me. There's one other layer um, that I use in the drop with extra trumpet sounds to like make it sound a little bit more white. But this is it for the intro, so... Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy again. Um, so yeah, I think that kind of covers the, the build-up. Um, so. Right, just to give you an idea, like on what layers I use with the trumpets, there's like a, a choir on top of it as well. Um, so these are the layers. I think this is the session pro IB4. Then this is a layer, which is frozen. I think it's another session session horns pro one. Um, but then there's this like little choir thing. Um, I don't know when I chose it, but it, it kind of sounded Brazilian in a way, the way they sing. <laughs> I don't know why, but it, it sounds good layered. Which is a preset in Omnisphere, uh, which is one of my favorite sample libraries slash plugins, um, slash workstations. You could literally build a whole tune in Omnisphere, I think. Um, it's one of my favorite things to, to use. Um, but it's a, it's a simple preset called uh, Choir Man Ass. So, yeah, it's. Um, Sometimes it's, it's as easy as that. It's super dry. There's not many effects on there. It's just a really nice layer to give that extra kind of vibe behind a kind of a, uh, a simple trumpet sound. Um, got some visitors. Um, so yeah, I, I love layering stuff up. When it when it comes to drums or or melodies or harmonies, I I used to. I used to use every kind of melody in the same instrument to just like have, have more of a wider sound. But now I, I tend to like take each harmony and like get every harmony played by a different instrument, so it stacks up really nicely. Um, so if you play a, a major chord, which you can't hear right now, if you play a major chord, um, I would get this played by a piano or, or sub bass, this played by um, silent, like a, a soft, a soft wave. This may be by another piano and then, then that by a trumpet or whatever. Like it depends on the song. But um I find working like that is it's just really cool. Um it, it gives a lot of depth to, to your harmonies and it um especially especially if you start panning it around, um it's it's just really strange. It it, it, it does something magical. Like you, you get um you get some harmonies on the left, some on the right, some in the middle and, and like suddenly it sounds really alive and really full. Um and that's that's what I'm trying to do with like most of my songs anyway. So yeah, moving on. Um, that was the the trumpet lead sound. Um, under that is just again that really kind of um, over compressed piano sound that is very popular in, in house music right now. I think it almost sounds like that. What's it called? M1, like that very kind of very two pianos with just lots of like OTT compression on top of it. Another layer. 
in Omnisphere, there's a, a preset called Cava Quinho, which is a four-string traditional Brazilian instrument. There we go, another Brazilian instrument, which I only found out about now, so I can't really take credit for that. Um, mm. This is this is a very very cool um, organ sound in Omnisphere. I think it's Go to This Church. Yeah, it's called Go to This Church. Absolutely brilliant. So a Hammond with a vocal noise effect. Great. It's very airy. Um, I took away all the all the lows and just really made it like um, fill up the the kind of higher. Um, kind of higher harmonies in the track. Um, yeah, it's very summery. Silent, another layer. Um, very simple, again, five source, a little bit detuned. Um, nothing, no effects like whatsoever, just really to fill up that kind of uh, harmony again. Just lots and lots of layers. Um, then, okay. That's interesting. So, all oh right, okay. So what I did there is something nobody should do. It's a uh, it's a very stupid move of mine. But basically, I've got two very high bass notes. Um, kind of hit too high. It's like the first sub note. It's not a, a great first sub note. It has to be a little bit deeper. So what I did, and I'm sure this is against all books, but I do it anyway. Uh, it's just harmonize it with like a sub um, one octave lower. Uh, but I'm sure the face would do something weird. Um, but yeah, in the finished project, you can't really hear it that, that much, I think. If you go more technically, I'm sure Noisia would shoot me if I say this, but this, this is how I work, so yeah. Uh, I used another layer of sub bass for the first two notes, just an octave lower to... Yeah, it works. It works on a big system, I think. There's, there's better ways to do it, but that's, that's how I did it. Um, so that's the sub bass both in silent, just as very simple, I'll show you a very simple sign, one sign, it's, um, it's all, it should be faced the same way, so yeah, um, one sign wave, um, and that's my sub in this song, mostly, um, I either use like a, a, a sign kind of, um, yeah, recording of a, of a cool synth for like a, a, a really full kind of color sign for the, for the sub, but sometimes I use a very simple sign like this, um, and this worked out for this sub, so that was all cool. Another kind of looped break there, which I got from a sample pack called Drum and Bass um, Loops. Drum and Bass Interface Rex, yeah. Cool, so um, after um, going through all the instruments and like the, the harmonies and the musical stuff, um, I'll, I'll go through the drums. Um, Basically, this is the drum group. Fairly non-complicated drum bass, kind of uh, typical kick snare uh, pattern. Uh, with lots of layers, but you can't really hear all of them. They're, they're just there to like, fill everything up a little bit. Um, the kick is just a sample. It's, yeah, um, for kicks, and snares. Uh, I've got this, this folder where it, like, I, I just save kicks and snares that I like and layers that I like. So this is a layer of probably like two or three kicks, just a sub, uh, a top. I can't show you because it's it's um, it's bounced already. Um, and with snares the same. Like I, I start with a lot of like 909 stuff for uh, for snares. So you've got that kind of 200 uh, earth like bump and and a bit of like high high end on top of that. Um, I think with kicks and snares and, and drums in general, I, I think it's the way I work. I, I don't tend to like get too much into detail un, un, until I've got the full kind of drum setup ready with all the loops and until I know how it's going to sit in the mix. Because sometimes um, with the, the right kind of symbols on top of a, on top of a snare uh, or something, like a, mostly a snare, um, it sounds so much better than without all the loops and all the symbols and um, you, you, you would have worked on the snare and give, given it so much more high layers and, and like high as well, like the, the symbols kind of fill up for that. Um, so I like to wait till I've got the full kind of drum set up ready till, till I start fine tuning the kicks and the snares basically. Um, the kick has nothing under like, I don't know, maybe 90 or 80 hertz. It's, it's quite like drum bass has, has got like kicks with not that much stuff in it. Uh, typically, uh, snare the same, 
lots of kind of 200 hertz, the typical kind of um, rocky kind of 200 hertz bump on the snare. I like I like cowbells. Can never have enough cowbells, so uh, it's it, that kind of changes a lot of a lot of producers do shuffles in between that kick and snare pattern. Um, and I like cowbells, for example, or like other other instruments that kind of uh, replace that. Um, this it's like the first layer under there, second layer like another kind of percussion kit standard in, in Ableton that I used to have in. Um, on the snare layer. So that's what we've got now. Then I use Silent uh, sometimes to kind of have, um, have like a high kind of white noise um, hit, like a high hit, like this. You can't really hear it that much in the mix, it's quite quiet. But um, the re reverb, sometimes it gives a nice kind of uh, a nice high element to it. I, there's, there's some producers that like swear by noises, by white noise, pink noise, all that stuff to like kind of fill up their drums. Like uh, Cameron Crooked, for example, use that a lot, I think, um, to kind of have that really short kind of attack and, and release on, on that sound. And it works really well for them. I use it to like fill up the drums a little bit when it's, um, when the highs are really coming through the mix enough. Um, so we've got that. This is like the kick snare and like some percussion layer. Then on top of that, there's a couple of breaks. This is like the two two groups with like lots of like breaks and extra elements, um, which I'll go into now. It's again a superior drummer, great for like cymbals. I think great to um, create human feel to it. It's like you, you, you can't hear the sam the samples ending. It really sounds like somebody's like hitting all the cymbals. Um, I, I bounced it again, so I can't show you the plugin. But it's um, I, I keep the humanized like factor quite high up, so like it, it sounds like some highs are like a bit higher in pitch or like a bit more to the left or the right. Um, another superior drummer, like a yeah, shuffling kind of higher. Another higher on the on the eight. Here's the first break. Oh yeah, it's a really cool uh, break. I mean, every sample pack has got so many cool breaks, but I like this one. I took a, out everything under a 790. It's probably a little bit too high. Could probably do this. Not like open hi -hats. Very simple. I just change the pitch to like have a, a different sounding one. It's, it's a lazy way around, I guess. Um, Another superior drummer, more more um, cymbals. Like you can never have enough cymbals in drum and bass. Sometimes I feel, especially if you're going for that rocky kind of feel, rather than the more kind of rolling feel. Um, so three or four layers of superior drummer cymbals, just to pan it around, have, have as much kind of stereo wave as possible with that. Um, sometimes I sample my own drums. This is drums for like uh, from another song of my album TNT. I sampled it. It was originally like 140. Um, Beats per minute. So I sped it up. Um, most of the times when I speed up beats or breaks, I uh, I use a read pitch um, warp mode in, instead of the beats one because it, it kind of keeps all the transients like intact. It's probably better to use it at this, but it's probably a bit too high up in the mix or something. I, I did it for a reason, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, that's probably one of one of my tips in Ableton. If you go warp beats and if you don't like uh, change the warp markers too much I'd, I'd go for re-pitch mode instead of beats mode or complex or anything like that just to have like the, the transients really really sharp um, I think for percussion it's really important and you're not trying to um, most of the times you're not trying to like keep um, a, a melody or a root note intact anyway it's it's all percussive stuff so it doesn't matter with that kind of stuff Another harmony trumpet. Sounds a bit like... I don't know what it sounds like. It sounds happy. Um, 
So after that, I got back into. Get the hip hop part. A little bit more harmony, this time more than, than in the intro. Um, like this. So I wonder what this sound is actually. It's like against Omnisphere, the, the woof sound. Oh, it's uh, it's just another choir. So this is just a women's choir, just a very sno short note. Obviously, we're like a. Oh, uh, I think I uh, I filtered down the whole the whole group. Yeah, so there's a low pass on the whole group. Uh, on all the musical stuff, just for the for the build up, I uh, yeah I just used I love I love using the the EQ uh, EQ eight. Um, native plugin enables on it, it does a trick for me most of the times. Unless you go into details for drum side, the, the fab filter plugins are like brilliant for that, I guess. But um, this is quite an old project as well. Like I've, I've changed my, yeah, my, my way of working quite a bit since then, I think. Um, but yeah, um, it still all works. Um, there's this one extra layer right before the drop again, which is this. I think I've made more interesting melodies in the past, but it's, it, it kind of gives an extra element before the drop. Um, so then it's back into the drop. Exactly. Kind of exactly the same thing, production-wise. Um, so what's important when you work with a vocal that's kind of um, Heavy in the mid range, I I tend arrangement wise I tend to like only use the vocals when there's not too much happening instrumentally. Um, so in this part, I took away quite a lot of harmonies, quite a lot of um, well, the trumpets. But to start with, all the all the organ stuff, it's only the piano in the background which works to the vocal. So that that doesn't make it too squashed. I think it's it's a good combination. Just piano, the, the height of the piano, not that much mid. That's what the OTT does really well, and then uh, the vocal in the mid, like, like really cool. I'll just go into the master chain that I use for this one. Um, so basically, for this track, the master chain is is fairly simple. Um, it's um, it's there's a lot I use. I love I love using the native plugins in Ableton. There's a there's a, there's a couple of really good plugins that just do the trick that keep my CPU done. I, I had to work on a Mac Pro for like most of my projects on this album anyway because my laptop couldn't couldn't take it anymore. But it's annoying if if a project a project gets that like heavy that you can't really play around with it anymore or can't play like piano live in anymore. I think so. I I tend to band enough files to like still have uh, enough memory and CPU left to like ever ever play with it. So the master chain is um, is simple. I just duck it down one dB. Um, probably because it was too loud, which which I tend to do a lot. Then the EQ8 um, plugin is quite cool. They, they've got a side and mid setting. So for mids, I um, obviously for, for bass, uh, for sub bass, I, I, I learned that you can't really spread it out too much. You, 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 have, to, um, you have to keep that like right in the middle. Um, same with kicks um, or like the sub, the sub layer of a kick anyway. So what this does basically is um, keep all the lows in the mids, uh, give it a small bump because I'm taking it out in, in the sides, uh, give a small bump. Again, there's probably more professional ways to do it, but for me this really works. Um, for sides, I take everything out under 250, but slowly, it's not like a, uh, like a crazy curve. Um, and again, I, I give a, a little bit of a boost around this kind of, uh, yeah, full 4K probably around, around that it, I, I give a bit of a boost. I mean, for some projects, uh, projects I, I use um, I use much more complicated like equalizing plugins to like find real like problems and mixes. But with Rio, it was it was quite easy. There wasn't any proper problems in the mix only that we have to solve um, when mixing it down. So it was it was fairly easy. Um, Multiband compression. I mean, over here I, I use I use a Fat Filter Pro L as a compressor. Sometimes I use the the Isotope Suite, where you can do all this stuff in the suite, like the stereo imaging, uh, the multiband, um, even EQing. You do it all in in the suite. Um, for some projects I like it, some I don't. 
um, there's, there's one here. I don't even know what this does. Oh, so yeah, um, in this chain, ozone does some harmonic exciting, some stereo imaging, which I actually did over here a little bit already, but it's, it's imaging, it's a, a little bit more. Sometimes I use a maximizer, depends, um, not on this project, um, because I'm using this plugin, the Pro L, which is, um, is a plugin I bought fairly recently. Um, I know previously I've been using it for ages, but I, I've only got into it recently. Um, the, whole, the whole bundle is amazing. You should, you should definitely grab it. Um, Saturn is an incredible plugin. It's, uh, it's really nice like, to visually kind of um, yeah, distort all these bands and really have that visual in front of you. It sounds brilliant. The Pro L as well, really happy with it. Um, and at, an, at the end of my chain, I just like to have a look at like a, a, a Dorf, which is a, a Waves plugin, um, which just shows you the view meter and the loudness of everything. Um, really simple, it's quite. For mixes, um, I like it when it's around minus four, the, the, the loudness, sometimes minus three. It depends on how club you want to go with a mix. For a radio mix like this, this is fine for me. It doesn't have to be squashed. The, the radio compression is going to do that for you anyway. Um, so yeah, it's um, a very simple kind of mastering chain. I like to keep it simple, basically. It's, um, it's much more about melodies, harmonies, the, the way those instruments sound to me than it's about production or, um, or technical plugins um, for me, personally. Um, yeah, for masters, like, it depends. Most of the time when I finish an album or, or finish a single, I, uh, I'll do my own master and, uh, and bands like a, a pre-master version with like lots of headroom so somebody can, uh, can do another chain with it. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a control freak, but I like to have control over my own masters. And especially when it comes to, um, because we play with the band as well, I like the record to sound as close as possible to as we, the, the way we play it live. So I, I like to know what's in the mastering chain and do it myself sometimes. I'm definitely not saying I'm, the, I'm a mastering, uh, mastering engineer or I'm good at it. I, I just like the way it, it sounds. And um, I tested out on all these like different kind of systems. I tested out in cars, I tested out even listening to it on the phone. Um, I tested out on, on my Sonos speakers inside on like some other speakers. I've got some good monitors in here, the Grim LS1 state. They're quite fairly, um, they've always been quite honest. Um, yeah, I, I just tried to, to listen to them at, uh, as, as many systems as, po as possible. And even when we rehearse with the band or sound check, um, I always bring like an iPhone or like a USB, uh, yeah, a USB stick to like, to just see how it sounds on a big system as well. It's, it's really f hard to find that one system that kind of, um, that is so honest that you know it's gonna sound great on the other systems. So you, you can't really find that one system, I think. So, um, for me, it's a, a lot of trial and error, just going back and forth, playing it on different systems, going back, noting down what frequencies were like too loud or too, too harsh. And um, yeah, that seems to work for me. So that's the way I work. Um, yeah, the most important sound in the, in the whole track, uh, I forgot to mention. Down for the minute, so just chill. It's actually, when we first started playing this song, there was the, the moment where we did cheers with our shots on stage, actually, it was quite fun. Um, again, so, for, um, to get from this track in Ableton to a live kind of uh, playable version, um, there's, there's a couple of things you need. Uh, first of all, you need musicians that are very good, because drum and bass is a hard genre to play. Uh, and uh, I'm lucky enough to have two of the best musicians I, I know that can, uh, can play most of the melodies and all the drums that uh, I program. Um, I mean, our drummer Michael Shack is a machine. He'll, um, he'll, he'll play everything as binary as Ableton does it almost. Like it's, it's so, so close to the click. He's so used to that. And Babel, our keyboard player, is, is really good at playing all these like really fast melodies, like my older stuff, like Give and Take and Secret Agent with all these like crazy synths. He's, uh, he's very good at playing those, so I, I got very lucky there. Um, but the way, the way I go from an Ableton project in studio like this into life is like a whole different, um, a whole different aspect on a song. For Rio, for example, um, I'd probably keep a couple of like harmonic layers in the backing track. So we, we play the, the piano, the, the loud kind of chords, and uh, maybe some, some organ. Um, but mostly, there's, there's, there's still a lot of elements in the backing track, I'm honest about it. It's, it's just to fill it up and 
get, keep that really kind of um, full life fitting to it because there's only three of us on stage and uh, if there was more we could have played all that. Um, but again, it's, it's very kind of quiet in the background but it's important to make, make the track a little bit more full life, um, especially life. So what I do live is playing that, um, where is it, playing this very simple, the very simple um, trumpet lead, uh, which at some point I want to try and start learning on an actual trumpet. Um, but yeah, right now that's, that's what I play, that lead sound. Um, Babel is playing the keys with some extra harmonies under there. Um, and Michael plays the kick snares, some hi-hats, but again, I. I keep some of the overheads, some of the, the, the symbols from like Superior Drum, I keep that in the backing track just to give, again, give it that real full, full feel. Um, if you if you'd listen to us, the band, play without any instruments, so just the backing track, on most of the tunes you'll only hear sub bass, maybe a little bit of shuffling, um, just stuff that isn't very interesting to do live for the drummer, he's, he's got other stuff that is more important to do. Um, so mostly that, those kind of loops, sub bass, maybe a couple of harmonic kind of uh, elements again to make it fuller. Um, but yeah, most most of the stuff is all played live, and and that's something I'm really proud of. Like there's there's lots of other bands that um, make it a lot live a lot easier, uh, which is easier, and I get jealous over it. And you do make mistakes if you play everything, but it's it's fun, it's important. Um, so what I would do is just find like the layers of drums, um, the the right kind of um, uh, the overheads and, and the, some shuffles, uh, find them, bounce them into like one file, bounce them into a loops kind of file, um, then try and bounce all the all the bass sounds, so you've got like one sub layer and, and bass layer. Uh, actually I played the, the bass line of the intro, um, mm -mm -mm. this one. Um. We do that live as well, um, so not all of the bass is is is, um, is yeah, triggered or whatever. Um, this this is played live as well. But then the sub bass on, on the drop, the simple sign bass, it just isn't that fun to play. It's that there's more elements that are like more exciting and visually exciting to play. Um, so yeah, I'd, I would bounce the sub bass for example um, for the drop, have that in a separate file, um, and then the vocals. So it's basically uh, four files, so eight channels that go to the to the front of house uh, for backing track, and then all the instruments above that go to the front of house as well. So he's got like lots of room to play with it and play around with it. Um, I think our front of house engineer really finds it important, for example, that um, like the the effects, uh, effects the, the the kind of the rises and and the crashes and all that. He needs control over that. So like. On some systems, when that's, that's not, yeah, when there's a lot of noise or something, he tries to push it as, as much as possible. And sometimes he goes to like 8 dB louder or something, just for like stuff like that, just for like rises and you know, they really push it, take it away right before the first kick comes in, and that gives it that real life feel to it, I think. Um, so, what else can I say about it? Yeah, that's like eight channels that go to the front from the files out of the the backing track computer, and all the rest is software synths or hardware synths or pianos um, and vocals. Hey guys, this was Netsky. I just explained um, how Rio worked in studio for me, and um, yeah, thanks so much for checking in. I hope it was uh, I, I hope it was exciting for you, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. My uh, my new album called Three is out right now. Please let me know what you think about it um, on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, everything, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks.